In this video, we will formally present the first of our three substitutions, and we will do an example involving it. Trigonometric substitution says that if you see a square root of a number squared minus x squared, you might try letting x equal that number times the sine of theta, dx equal that number then times the cosine theta d theta, and you might try rewriting the integral in terms of theta and d theta. And the picture you have in the back of your mind here is this. We're getting all of this by looking at this right triangle. And I'm not saying this as a definitive rule that if you see this, you would definitely should try this. I say you might. There might be better methods, maybe integration, probably not parts, but maybe you substitution will work. Maybe you want to look at your inverse trig function integrals. Maybe none of those work, but also this doesn't work. There are no guarantees in calculus too when you're doing integration. This is just a suggestion of something that might sometimes work. For example, suppose we have the integral of x cubed over the square root of nine minus x squared dx. We see this square root, and this square root does have this form. So the suggestion is that we might try letting x equal 9 is 3 squared. So 3 times the sine of theta and then dx, we would let be 3 times the cosine of theta d theta. And our picture is x three, the square root of nine minus x squared, and theta is here. And when we do this trigonometric substitution, we always make a technical assumption that theta is between negative 2 and pi divided by 2. But for now, it's hard to see what that gets us. Let's just plug this x in to this integral and this dx 
into this integral and see what happens. The integral of 27 times the sine cubed of theta times dx, we'll go ahead and put that in the numerator, three times the cosine of theta, d theta, in the square root, nine minus x squared, which is nine, times the sine squared of theta. 27 times three is 81. That doesn't seem to be doing us any good and it's a constant, we'll just pull it out. sine cubed theta times cosine theta d theta divided by, and in the numerator, sorry, in the denominator, we pull a nine out. I won't make absolute rules because there aren't a lot of absolute rules in integration. But when you're doing integration by trigonometric substitution, if you don't end up using the Pythagorean identity, it would be a very unusual situation. And if we rewrite this a little, the Pythagorean identity says that what we have here is the cosine squared of theta. Let's continue. In the numerator, nothing is going on. We'll just leave this. As is. In the denominator, the nine comes out of the square root. And we get the square root of the cosine squared of theta. This three pops right out of the integral. And you might do this next step without a lot of thought, but actually in this step we're using, to go from this to this, we're using this restriction we put on theta. Theta is between negative pi over two and positive pi over two. In the fourth and the first quadrant, the cosine of theta is positive. 
ordinarily, if you have the square root of something squared, you'd have absolute values here, but we don't because it's positive. The absolute value doesn't do anything. Those cancel. And we're left with 27 times the integral of the sine cubed of theta. And now let's all take a deep breath because we're not done yet by any means. Here is where we have arrived to. And I guess the good news is that we know how to find this integral. I don't know if there really is any bad news. We have an odd power here. We pull a single sign out. And then we'll re rewrite the sign squared using the Pythagorean identity. The sine squared is one minus the cosine squared. So we've got the integral of one minus the cosine squared theta times the sine of theta d theta. That you equal the cosine of theta, then du is the negative sine of theta. And this integral becomes the negative integral of one minus u squared du or the negative u minus one third u cubed. Now what's u? u is the cosine of theta. So the negative cosine of theta plus one third the cosine cubed of theta. And we've got, forgive me, I certainly don't want to start this whole problem over again because of this, but I did make this mistake. We have this 27 in the front of this integral. So negative 27 times the cosine theta minus one third the uh, cosine cubed of theta. 
Sorry for that pause. I thought I was missing a negative sign, but I wasn't. This is all correct. And now we've got the cosine of theta and the cosine cubed of theta, but that's not the variable we want to have. We want our variable to be x. Going up from this triangle, The cosine of theta is the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. So negative 27 times the square root of nine minus x squared over three, that's the cosine of theta, minus one third the cosine of theta cubed plus our constant of integration. And there's our problem and it's done, but you can maybe see why this technique doesn't, isn't a favorite among students. We certainly had to struggle to get from beginning to end.